What is going on gamers? Evertrix here and today we're gonna go ahead and talk about the mid game. Now this is where you have already unlocked T3 and are on your way to T4 or maybe you've already unlocked T4 and we're gonna talk about the best way to keep improving your account once you've gotten to that stage or just about past that stage. Now a lot of times people are so focused on making sure that they unlock T4 that by the time they get there they're just like okay well what am i supposed to do now and we're gonna go ahead and talk about just that now once you go ahead and finish up your t4 research the next question is okay well where do i focus next the easy answer is definitely monster hunting um, not only is this going to improve your account because you can get a lot of relocators gems rare items etc but remember this is a team oriented game at the end of the day and monster hunting not only improves your account but it also improves the gifts and all of that that your guild is going to receive now once you get past monster hunting or if you get to a decent enough level that you're comfortable with it the next big question is which one uh, of these other trees do i focus on next now there is actually no right answer to this and the reason for that is because not everybody is focusing on the same thing for instance Upgrade military is more of an everyday type of uh, tree that makes your everyday playing much easier. You have quick swap, central command, innate talent, etc. Um, but there's really nothing here that's going to increase your actual battle stats. It's just about making things cheaper and uh, a little better for you. So if you're not into attacking or defending a lot, etc., upgrade military might be the tree for you. Now, if you're more focused on making sure that your army stats, etc., are higher, um, then army leadership is more of your uh, tree that you should focus on next. Just because you have uh, these army offense, army health, all of that, bigger army, and then of course you have then the debuffs, which are very important, very very expensive, but very important. Um, then the army leadership is something that you want to then focus on and then military command is more of a like in between type of tree there's a lot of things that make uh, your everyday playing a little easier there's darkness max deposit energy limit and then of course you have uh, your uh, your army stats improvement so military command is more like an in between um, there, you can also just focus on each tree depending on where you want to get to and then move on to the next there's really no specific way that you should do it the first thing that you sh uh, you should do is make sure that you know exactly what you want to focus on and then go for it depending on these trees now these other ones familiar tree is definitely important but sigils and wonder bottles is a little bit different because of course you gotta buy packs in order to uh successfully you know uh research these so they're in a, in a little bit of a different category so something to keep in mind now once you go ahead and know what you want to focus on your research etc the next thing is going to be your gear now there's a lot of different things that you can do but the main thing that you should do is you need to pick one gear set and what i mean by one gear set is pick items that you want to go ahead and focus on going forward now if you take a look at this set that i have right here you'll notice that a lot of these sets are not items that only give you one troop type boost so for instance i have my beast helm that gives me infantry cavalry and then army hp instead of something like a worm bone coronet which is just range i see a lot of people making the mistake of trying to make an infantry set a cavalry set and a range set which technically isn't a bad thing in theory but the problem is that if you try to make three different sets without having a core set meaning a, a set that is meant for all troop types then a lot of times all those sets are going to fall a little flat so i'll give you an example here so i'll put in my infantry my infantry set now keep in mind it doesn't have to be all gold or mythic or even purple it just depends on the level that you're in but think about this set right here if somebody tries to make this set with only infantry jewels what's going to end up happen is that you probably are not going to have enough jewels to make it worth your time whereas if you actually keep this set one core set and you put in each item 
infantry, cavalry, and range jewels, it's actually going to take you much further and when you're being rallied, you don't have to specifically choose do I use my infantry set, do I use my cavalry set, or do I use my range set. You can, you can go ahead and pick one core set and make sure that you improve it as much as you can over time. One other important thing to note is that when you have something like this, when you have a core set, then once you go ahead and start getting the jewels that you need, let's say that you get all purple jewels or all blue jewels, then if you have extra, you can then start upgrading the jewels. There is one fundamental mistake that I see a lot of people make with the jewels. If you have a set that you can go ahead and take out three purple jewels to then make one gold, a lot of people try to do that and think, well, I have a gold jewel. Problem is that one gold jewel only gives you 20%. Whereas if you break that gold jewel down, it'll give you four of these purples. And as you can tell, four purples is actually 48%. That is way better than 20%. So that means that you should only be improving your jewels once you have enough jewels without compromising any of the jewels that you have in the set previous to that. So very important to keep that in mind because I see a lot of people they'll be like okay well I have one cavalry jewel to gold and then they'll have two items that have no cavalry jewel whatsoever so very important to keep in mind now another very important thing is your troops now of course troops in this game are very important not only because you need them to defend yourself and attack but you also need them to gather etc um, once you get to this stage you then are faced with the dilemma of fury what do you do when you have fury if you're being rallied if you're being solo attacked etc what do you do with your troops a very good rule of thumb is to not have more troops than you can hide and what i mean by that is of course we all know about the shelter and that you can shelter your troops there but another good way of hiding your troops is popping a uh, max, uh, what is it called, max army size boost. Uh, you probably prefer to do a 50%. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and send them very, very far away. Uh, I don't know, let's say like 120 miles away or something, something like this. And then you can go ahead and gather and send the max amount that you can send. Now, technically at this point, you should have about six armies. So once you do the math on that, uh, the point where you want to be is just around 2 million troops, give or take, depending on what you have. Um, because once you're rallied, you don't have to make the important decision of, okay, do I take this rally? Do I, what do I do with this? You can just safely hide your troops. The problem, if you go over that, let's say you have 3 million troops, then you either have to sacrifice a million troops because you're going to hide, but you're still going to have no way of hiding another million troops, or you're going to be forced into trying to take a rally that you probably shouldn't be taking. So try to keep your troops at the amount that you can actually hide before you make the jump and are ready to start taking rallies, etc. It's very important because if you have 4 million troops and you get rallied by somebody that have much better gear, heroes, etc. It's not going to end well for you. And while we're on the subject of heroes, heroes are very important, especially at this stage of the game. Now, there are two no-brainers that you should go ahead and take up to gold as soon as possible. One of them, of course, is going to be Rose Knight, and then the other one is going to be Trickster. Uh, just because they bring so much to the table. Now, keep in mind, Trickster doesn't really give you much as far as you know, attacking or defending. Um, but everything else that he gives you is very, very beneficial. So, after these two no-brainers, what exactly should you be focusing on? Well, there's a lot of different things that you should focus on. Whether it's Colosseum, attacking, uh, monster hunting. But, the uh, couple of heroes that I would definitely suggest you focus on to take to gold right away are going to be the heroes that give you a troop type attack and HP. So a perfect example of that is going to be Demon Slayer. He gives you infantry attack and infantry HP. Now, for those of you that don't know, attack is always better than HP, which is always better than defense. So that's the way that you want to go ahead and start thinking about these things. 
So attack and HP are definitely going to be the most valuable ones. So in this case, Demon Slayer, especially because Demon Slayer is good for monster hunting, Colosseum, attacking. He's pretty much just good for everything. There's actually another one uh, for the infantry that does the same thing, and that is going to be uh, Oath Keeper. The only problem with Oath Keeper is that unlike Demon Slayer, he's not that great for monster hunting. He's not that great for Colosseum. So he would be the second infantry hero that I would try to do. The, uh, the range equivalent to that is Snow Queen, um, because you see there, range attack and range max HP. And then, of course, the cavalry equivalent to that is going to be Child of Light. Now, another one to consider is uh, it's going to be Bomb and Goblin, because he gives you army attack. And what that means is that it's going to give you infantry, cavalry, and range attack 20%, which is very, very beneficial to you. Uh, and then once you go ahead and get these heroes to gold, you can go ahead and then start thinking about what other heroes you want to start using for Colosseum, for monster hunting. Um, but one crucial thing that a lot of people miss is when you determine what hero you want to start working on, take it all the way to gold. Don't take it to purple and then start another one, take that one to purple and then go to the other one and take that one to purple, etc. Because then you'll have like eight or nine purple heroes with no gold. And if you did not already know, when you compare a gold level hero to a purple, purple grade is not even half as good. Not even half. So when you take a look at the purple grade and the gold grade, it's almost, almost three times as good as the purple. So when you pick a hero, just make sure that you go all the way up to gold because the purple equivalent is not even half as good as the gold. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Appreciate you guys for watching and until later.